There should be three distinct layers in the shop. As organisms that are largely made out of carbon, the carbon cycle is quite an important bit of biology to know. Well, not know, but to actually happen. First of all, carbon is largely available in the form of CO2 in the atmosphere. It's a relatively small percentage, but this is where plants get all their CO2, which brings me to the first point of the carbon cycle. The carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants via photosynthesis with the addition of light, hence the sun. Now this energy from plants, this carbon from plants is passed down the food chain into animals such as sheep. Now when the sheep dies, microorganisms break down the material into CO2. However, if it's in an environment where there is no where there is no decomposes, it turns into fossil fuels such as coal and oil. And this oil will eventually be burnt by by industry producing yet again more CO2 returning it to the atmosphere. Also the sea absorbs a lot of carbon in the colder months and in the winter, it, not in the winter, in the summer when it gets warmer this carbon dioxide is released giving it back to the atmosphere. Additionally plants and animals both respire so they both give out CO2 as well back into the atmosphere. So that's another way that we get carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And it's also because photosynthesis is photosynthesis is light dependent, the carbon dioxide level at night increases and in the daytime it decreases because photosynthesis requires light. With an excess of CO2 and methane in the atmosphere, the planet will get uncomfortably warm. And as I'm sure most of you will have seen on the telly, this will give some effects, such as the melting of the polar ice caps, which will cause a rise in sea level. Um, something you might not know about this is that salt water will rise, go further up the river, making it harder to grow crops. Um, because the planet's getting warmer, there's a change in environmental conditions where plants and animals are affected. Plants being affected by crops may fail, and animals will be dis animals and wild plants will be dispersed differently. There will be greater rainfall due to more temperature, more evaporation of the sea, which again will change the environment. Um, insects may be more suited to up north environments, so we may get more tropical diseases up north. However, there is a bright side to this. Rain may fill reservoirs which can grow tropical fruit up north, so we may well see British mango farmers at some point. Another nutrient that needs to be cycled around is nitrogen. The nitrogen cycle takes place in four stages. The nitrogen fixation stage is the first one. Nitrogen fixation is the, t is the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen, N2, into ammonium. This is done by either root nodules on leguminous plants, as shown here, or free saprobiotic bacteria. Inside the root nodules there are saprobiotic bacteria. These turn nitrogen from the atmosphere into ammonium ions, NH3. Another way you get ammonia into the soil is from decaying plant and animal matter, and also animal feces, which are broken down by decomposers. I should mention the process of ammonia being put into the soil by decaying matter is called ammonification and that is the second stage. The third stage is the conversion of ammonium ions into nitrates, which are usable by plants. This is done in two stages, the first of which is ammonium ions being converted into nitrite ions, which are then converted into nitrate ions, which can be taken up by plants. This is all done by aerobic bacteria, which means they need oxygen. This is generally favourable in ploughed fields with not waterlogged soil. The last stage is denitrification, which is where nitrates are removed from the soil. This is done by denitrifying bacteria, which are anaerobic bacteria, so they suit waterlogged conditions, such as you would find in a flooded field, which we have many of in England at the moment and this essentially releases nitrogen back into the atmosphere. Some of this cycle can be done artificially, which is the nitrates in the soil. We can get artificial fertilizers which contain nitrates, 
So I'll quickly draw a tractor. And this puts nitrates into the soil. So here we have the nitrate cycle. Hydrogen in the atmosphere into plants, turned into ammonium ions, from which can also come from animals and plants, which get their food from each other, goes into nitrites, nitrates, and denitrifies. In farming, generally the crop's removed before it has time to decay, so this leave this halts the nitrogen cycle before ammonification. So the soil can be left of ammonium ions and therefore nitrate ions. This means that nitrate ions or ammonium ions have to be given back to the soil in some in some manner. There are two ways of doing this, natural fertilizers or synthetic fertilizers. Natural fertilizers, such as manure, contain dead animal matter which will rot into ammonia and then turn into nitrates. Synthetic fertilizers just skip out that pro skip out the entire ammonification process and go straight to nitrates. Um, synthetic fertilizers are generally produced by using ammonia, which is produced using the hub process. One of the problems of synthetic fertilizers is that some synthetic fertilizers are soluble. This means that they can be dissolved in rainwater and can flow into nearby lakes or water sources. Now, one of the consequences of this is an, a massive increase in the concentration of nitrates in the lake. Lakes don't contain much nitrates anyway. So when the nitrates go into the lake, algal blooms occur because algae are plants, plants like nitrates, it's what they use for food, so they grow a lot, causing algal blooms on the surface of the lake slash pond slash water source. This algal bloom is thick enough to block light from the plants below, so this prevents penetration of light, which means that the plants below the, this algal bloom will die. Now when the plants die, decomposes, will reproduce exponentially because they'll have, a, they'll have a hell of a lot of food with all these dead plants. Um, as we know, these decomposers, sapriotes, are aerobic, so they use oxygen. This causes the dissolved oxygen in the lake to decrease in concentration, which means fish and things like that will die. Um, and a consequence of this is anaerobic digesters can break down the organisms into nitrates and other toxic substances. And this means that the lake essentially dies and nothing really happens anymore.